Online communications is now part of every modern day warfare. We regularly see states and leaders, not just Trump, use online propaganda as part of their arsenal. And on the flip side, Kashmiri's freedom of speech online is suffocated to the point that any criticism against the Indian government risks terrorism charges. So will the minister commit to work internationally on the issue of online propaganda, fake news, the spread of racism, and the measures taken to silence news coming from Kashmir? The now decades-long fight for Kashmiris to determine their own future looks further from reality than ever before. And until the people of Kashmir have the most fundamental of all human rights, which is to live safely and to be free from fear, we must and we will continue to stand with the people of Kashmir. View is that this is a human rights issue. We went to a, um, a, 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 a refugee camp in Kotli, and we met, and I met, and my all, all my parliamentary colleagues met people who had suffered the most grievous injuries. When she talks about the lockdown, he's absolutely right. This is a lockdown that is not like our lockdown. This is a lockdown that it attacks the very fundamental rights that we all take for granted here. There are people in Kashmir who have been waiting 15 years for a trial. 15 years! And there's not a word from the international community in respect to this. Torture is, reg is, is commonplace. Young people disappearing. Yet we don't see this on the television screens of the Western world. All uh, stories I've heard of rape and sexual violence against women, absolutely appalling. As an international community, working with our European partners, with uh, pre President-elect Biden in America, we have the opportunity now, I think, to come up with an international programme through the United Nations, which is going to give succour and hope to those poor people in Kashmir. But that does not mean we should not hold the Indian government to account for its abusive behaviour, especially in Kashmir. But also because of the concern of thousands of our constituents who are desperately worried about their, their families in Jammu and Kashmir. And it's may be made even worse when communications are shut down and they have to spend weeks and sometimes months having no idea what has happened to, uh, to, to, to their loved ones. The current crisis has been deliberately instigated by the Indian authorities. And also the change to property law to try and change the facts on the ground in Kashmir fundamentally by changing the population and therefore trying to secure a different outcome to a possible referendum. Arrest, disappearances, which I have to say was also an appalling feature of the crackdown in the, uh, in, in, in the Punjab after the, uh, after, after, after the assault on the, on the Golden Temple, and many report that this is still going on. We went to the line of control, and I was able to witness firsthand what my constituents have been telling me for a long time, and these are truly heartbreaking stories. Then I had the women and children begging me, pulling at me, and, and, and again, my honourable member will confirm this because he saw that happening. They were desperate for my help. They were begging me, and... That shouldn't be happening. We're in the 21st century. We need to be doing something. More needs to be done, otherwise millions of Muslim people will continue to live in oppression, fearing for their constitutional freedom and, ultimately, for their own lives. United Nations Security Council Resolution 47, providing the right of a plebiscite for the people of Kashmir, has existed since 1948. The will to implement still doesn't. 74 years on, the trajectory for the people of Kashmir is leading to a future far from a right of self-determination and closer to one of non-existence. In 2019, when India unilaterally revoked Article 370, removing the special status of Kashmir, outrightly defying United Nations resolutions, setting back previously agreed international resolutions like the similar agreement, arresting Kashmiri political leaders, enforcing curfews, implementing a media blackout and denying internationally agreed principles of human rights for Kashmiri people. Apart from the words of condemnation, what else did the people of Kashmir get? Since the start of 2010 to 2019 siege, the Kashmiri people have been shut off from the entire world, occupied by over 600,000 Indian soldiers in the largest military occupation in the world. Kashmiri women are targeted for rape. 
250 Kashmiris killed, 1,500 injured, 657 houses destroyed, 4,815 cordon and search operations during the past one year alone, political leaders under house arrest and being put through kangaroo courts, thousands of non-Kashmiri Hindus of India have been issued domicile certificates, and the Indian government is proactively changing the very demographics of Kashmir, leading only to a path of ethnic cleansing of Kashmiri people. From 2015 to last year, Britain has sold more than half a billion of arms worth of arms to India, arms that will contribute to the blood of the Kashmiri people. Without the reassurances from the UN, we can't be sure we are not contributing to a genocide. The Prime Minister has now cancelled his visit to India. Will he follow on and cancel the shipment of arms to India? We need international leaders and governments with the will to take action and stop genocides from taking place. The time to act is now. Kashmir has been living under heavy lockdown restrictions since August 2019, following the special status of Jammu and Kashmir being revoked by India. And we should be clear about what these lockdowns actually mean. No foreign journalists are being allowed into Kashmir by the Indian government. Thousands of people have been arrested, face harassment and imprisonment without due cause. Lawyers, small business owners, journalists, students, and of course, human rights activists. Legal reforms have been made um, so that residents' property rights can be revoked. Properties have been destroyed and innocent people are losing their lives. It's reported that nearly 300 Kashmiris have been killed and over 1,600 injured and more than 900 houses destroyed since special status was revoked.